Essex. Hello, hashtag First TV family, and welcome. It's week 254, A56. I was so good. I was. I didn't even have to look for the first part. Hashtag Worst TV A five. Hey. Okay. Let's actually read it and get it right. Hashtag Worst TV two fifty four A six. I'm Aaron Mack, and we can go ahead and get started with the first question. And the first randomly selected question, I was looking at the previous one, and I was like, ooh, I like that. But that means it can't be for this one. The... You know, the, we were on a roll with, like, great questions for the randomly selected question for a, a while. And the first press for the randomly selected question, I loved it. It was great. The second press, I do not love. It says, and I quote, If you had one hour left to live, what would you do? And part of me was going to give this a really quick answer and just say, pray. Yeah, th that that would probably be a part of the whole thing, whatever I do. But in, I don't... So let me say this. I believe that this question is for people who have restricted themselves from things that they want and things that are at the core of their biggest desire and they just don't do it because, oh, society will look down on me. I don't, I don't think I do that for the most part at all. You know, I just live my life, I am openly me. There would have been a time that, like, if that question was asked to me, like, uh, no, a decade, of, uh, like 15 years ago. Oh my gosh, I am not a kid. I am 40, 40 years old. But if that question was asked to me, like, 15 years ago, oh. I think it secretly would have been, oh, I, if I only had one hour left, I would just come out to everybody and let them know that I am gay. I am a man who is attracted to men. FYI, I'm sorry. But y'all already know. Anyway, all right. My song this week is coming from 1990. So, it's Lisa Stansfield, All Woman, from 1992 is when it made it to America, it was originally released in 91 in the UK. And what I particularly and recently think about in relation to that song, as I've mentioned on past episodes, the guy who I dated off and on since my early 30s, he, um, yep, right up to almost 40. Anyway, I remember one time, um, as far as backstory, we, Five. So that means five minutes. Actually, yeah. So it's like we had 
started dating again early 30s. So that was fresh into my MS diagnosis. So I didn't really have much to my MS diagnosis beyond the statement of the diagnosis, the MS diagnosis. And this will be a great time for me to shout out Mac T's. Check them out. M C T E E S P L E A S E Mac T's, please. That's my brother's Etsy shop. And he created a shirt with me in mind. And I wear it quite frequently where it says MS, a diagnosis, not a definition. And I, I dig that and all of that to bring it back to him. The diagnosis, it was just a diagnosis at that time, not much more in terms of struggle. And again, we dated off and on through that stuff. And I remember one time, pretty much the last time that we actually hung out, he demanded for me to please him. And I'm saying something else without saying it. He demanded for me to please him, and I obliged happily. And while I was doing it, he was like, yeah, you know, also back home, I got some, uh, he didn't say I got some, he is actually quite well as articulate, but he was like, I've got some friends and you, I've got some friends that, that you can please them too. And bring us all the way full circle. That made me think of that song, All Woman, because while I, I was doing it for that instant, I was like, I, I felt very cheap. And I remembered how when we first started, it was before the MS diagnosis took me to the walker that I currently use. Not always. I, I am going to work my way out of it. Hallelujah. Me. And I, I, I think about lines in the song where, where Lisa Stansfield sings. And ooh, in the video... But one of the, the men that she was representing with it, when he delivered the line, you look a mess, he, he actually, he was like, you look a mess. He said, babe, you look a mess. And he was like, you look a mess. And I was like, oh, anyway, but yes. And I, I think about myself and how I were the lyrics for myself currently, I'm like, yes, I look a mess, but I don't love you any less. I thought you'd always thought enough of me to always be impressed. I, yes, I, I use a walker currently at this moment now for a moment, for a period, but I'm all lover. And I, I also say, but I'm all brother, you know, like, uh, please, because I, I'm, I'm not a woman. I'm comfortable being a man. So I, I'm cool with that. But I may, yes, I may use a wall. I almost made myself tear a little bit thinking about other people. Because I, and this is the thing, I don't often cry for myself, thinking about myself. I cry a lot thinking about other people and their struggles in life. And with that particular line, I was like, ooh, I can imagine somebody else who's currently stuck to a walker being like, yes, I may use a walker now currently, but I'm all whoever I am, 
All right. I think that was more than enough. All right. Like, share, subscribe, share again, and please do not forget to click like. Thank you very much. Oh, and also as far as Lisa Stansfield, I, I, I don't remember the song she was singing or what, but Lisa Stansfield is a belting diva. I was watching her live performance of something, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, I, I, I never got into it that much, but now it's like, now I understand why she was actually on Whitney Houston's Bodyguard soundtrack, because she actually sings her butt off. Anyway, all right, like, share, subscribe, share again, and here we go. Hashtag prerequisite modification. Hashtag retirement. Finance.yahoo.com. Hashtag verse TV A6A. Yahoo Finance. Benzinga. Quote, retirement is a stupid idea. End quote. Rich political commentator says it's, quote, totally insane, end quote, to believe you should receive Social Security after only working for 45 years? But those who actually, quote, work for a living, end quote, argue retirement is the dream getting them through each day. Janine Mancini, Friday, March 15th, 2024, 3.42 p.m. Eastern. Ben Shapiro, a divisive conservative political commentator, stoked controversy with his recent remarks dismissing the concept of retirement as, a, quote, a stupid idea, end quote. During the March 12th edition of his, quote, Daily Wire, end quote, podcast, Shapiro said, quote, Frankly, I think retirement itself is a stupid idea unless you have some sort of health problems, end quote. The 40-year-old pundit who has a reported $50 million net worth from his media empire, criticized the retirement age of 65 in the United States. Article continues below. A whole heap of quotes in that article, yes. And um, the author was on it. She was like, I'm not going to, this is an editorial, but I'm not, anyway, let me stop. But um, yes, <laughs> My initial interpretation of his saying that, and I think I heard it somewhere else earlier as well, and this was like that confirmation that, Aaron, you need to pontificate about it on hashtag verse TV. Yay, pontificate. Okay, anyway, but yeah. My first reaction was, yeah, those are really some harsh words that he said, and I was thinking that, you know what, especially with him being a fellow 40-er, I was like, ever since we can remember, for since our childhood, we have been told that there will be no more Social Security when we're ready to retire. And... Maybe we're getting people to like promote such talking points and perspectives to get us used to the idea of the fact that there will be no social security when it's time for us to retire. And I'll also say as far as the social security age, it's my understanding this has happened to more than one person. I particularly think about my grandmother 
on my mom's side, my maternal grandmother, who retired on her 70th birthday. And on her 70th birthday, due to the stress of the fact that, oh my gosh, I've been working for so long, now I'm going to stop, just cut it off. And I love my job. I love, and she was the manager of the medical records department. And she's like, I love my job, but now I'm going to just cut it off cold turkey and just stop. And due to all of that stress and everything, that day that she was to go in to turn her keys in and be officially retired after that, this sucks so much because I was so young. I, I didn't, I, anyway, but yes, on the day she was supposed to retire, she, and turn in her keys, she had a really bad headache and she was like, I'm sorry, I can't come into work yet. And then it just got worse and worse. And um, next thing you know, we realize, oh, she's having a stroke. And, oh, yeah. So, and it's my understanding that that sort of thing happens to a number of people. So there is, I don't, Cutting off employment cold turkey after decades of work. It's not that 45 years is not a long time, but after decades of that routine, to cut that routine and just be like cold turkey, that's tough. And perhaps what we could do instead, and this is me trying to solve a problem because, you know, with social security running out, maybe not make retirement a cold, hard one day you're here full time. The next day you're out. Enjoy, enjoy your time off forever for the rest of your life. Instead of retirement being that maybe it can be that on your retirement, you do it in like cycles and break it down slowly. Like you start off, like you get a significant amount of time off. Maybe instead of X number of weeks, you get X number of months to use however you wish. That's the answer to use however you wish, but it's not paid time off from your company. It's paid time off coming out of your retirement accounts and your social security benefits. And then you can slowly wean yourself off. So maybe uh, three months, then next thing you're off four months, the next thing you're off six months, the next thing you're off 12 months for, for the entire year. That is 12. So yeah. And then you'll be living life entirely on your social security benefits, but you didn't have to instantly switch to that. You were able to build to it. So that might be good. Yeah, he's a fellow 40 year. And I remember my, um, previous, not current, but previous personal trainer at the gym, he actually liked Mike Shapiro. And I was like, so who is this Mike Shapiro? Because he was telling me some things about, because I, I don't know if you can tell, but I talk a lot. I can. And we would talk about a lot of stuff and he brought up Mike Shapiro and I think he might have brought up Mike Shapiro is about your age. I'm like, really? 40? At the time, I wasn't 40. I was 39. But I was like, really? Because technically, Mike Shapiro and I are six months apart. And um, he is actually about six weeks apart from Kevin. 
um, younger than both of us. He's a January 84 baby. We are both 83. Anyway, but yeah, and at first I was like, it's because we've mismanaged, miss, because of our federal mismanagement of our funds, that's our perpetual federal mismanagement of our funds. So that way I'm not blaming one person or one administration, our perpetual mismanagement of our funds that have brought us to this situation where we don't have enough money or will not have enough money for Social Security. And what we have to do is just build people up to be like, get to the point that people think, uh, are you on Social Security requirement? I don't retire. I work always. Uh, you living off the government. Uh, you know. So and in, instead of that, but it that makes me think of. I remember when President Obama, former President Obama, first went into office. He was like, "Wow, when you see things from the Oval Office, you." understand that things might not be as simple to solve as you once thought they were on the ground. Because um, if I recall from the movie, huh. yes, that President Obama actually used to be a, uh, a social community activist or something, and he's like, yeah, from the Oval Office, you see that the solutions are not as easy as many people purport them to be or think that they are, you know, because you see things from many different sides that you had not been able to see before. So I could be like, well, the simple solution is that you just let people slowly take some time off and then whatever, you know, it's like, but I, I get it with things that there's always other things to look at. And particularly with people being so emotional about things, it, it can be very difficult because people are very convicted. Conviction of the heart, uh, Kenny Loggins, but very convicted about their beliefs. And they believe very strongly that this is the simple solution. If only we would do this simple thing. But when you're able to see it from more angles, you see, oh, it's really not that simple. Anyway, but yeah. Mm. Many, um, yeah, it's 27, 27. That means I have three minutes. Yes. So <laughs> many people who I've been reading lately because I'm trying to do a better job and be a grown up with my money, people talk about investments and how it's important to make sure everybody who I'm reading at and read talks about the importance of investments. You don't just depend on social security. It's like, I, I get that. I do. I do. And yes. And maybe we, yes. And maybe we are headed toward losing our middle class entirely. That's a possibility. And making it so we're just here to support the wealthy. That's it. Because there'll be no more middle class. You can't retire on Social Security. You can't live that life, work a, a middle class job, and retire on Social Security because there is none. So you're just going to have to work forever until you die. And eventually it'll get to the point that it's like, 
We have a wealth class for the wealthy, those who have a whole lot of money. Um, Vivian too. I'm reading her book now, audio book. She, um, I, I think if I recall, she mentioned her FU amount of money that she wants to reach is like 25 million. So pe people who have 25 million, because with, what's the word? Not perpetual, compounding interest. Yes, with compounding interest, having $25 million invested can continually pay you. And that's a thing. But yeah, as far as people, oh, okay. But as far as people living on, it would be two classes, the wealth class and the workers. And that's it. We, we would be just like the third world countries that only have wealthy and workers. And the rest of us would just work for the rest of our lives and people will feel the word is not vindicated, but I'm going to use it because it's close, maybe. But people will feel victorious, successful about the fact that, well, we're only working to support the wealthy, but at least we're not working to support welfare queens because there is no welfare. We just work to support the wealthy. And people can argue like, oh, you work to support the wealthy? <laughs> well, I work to support the wealthiest of the wealthy. So I'm better than you. And another person could be like, oh, well, you work to support the wealthiest of the wealthiest? Well, I'm better than both of you because I work to support the wealthiest of the wealthiest intergalactic planetary travel. So I'm better than you. Oh, got to get back to work. <laughs> it's actually quite sad, but yeah. Hey. Hey. I remember Eric about do this video for next lifetime. And um, she got a good from a woman back at, because in the video next lifetime it started off taking place in Africa and they went to America then back to Africa in like the year 3000 and she exchanged goods for the woman's goods it wasn't money she uh, poured some beans at her hand it's like yeah maybe Maybe money makes things complicated. Anyway, all right. So like, share, subscribe, click like again, and don't forget to click like and share and stuff. Thanks. Like, share, subscribe, share again, and don't forget to click like. Thank, click, like. Click hashtag for future husband. Heart, heart, hashtag breaker at tonight's conversation hashtag first tv a six b text what is your ultimate relationship deal breaker well at first i thought like i would say like bad conversation if he can't speak to me and communicate with me. I'm a communicator. I need a man who can communicate with me. And if he cannot, that will be a deal breaker. But then I thought about it a little bit more and I was like, mm, no, that's actually not my biggest deal breaker because in talking to my love many times, oh, my cat is here. Oh, shut up. Hey, hey, girl. Okay. Yep. She's up now. She's like, I want to be involved. She's wonderful. I tell my love often, 
I have told him often because I am a 40 year old man who has some baggage. I'm like, as far as the what's an ultimate deal breaker for me, putting your hands on me. That's an ultimate deal breaker. And yes, that can kind of be like baggage. And that I remember this ex of mine when I was younger. He, we got into um, a disagreement and what? I called him the B word, right? And he was like, call me one more B. Call me one more B. And in my mind, I was like, he was downstairs, I was upstairs. He was like, call me one more B. And I was like, if you are not the type of person to escalate a verbal confrontation to a physical confrontation, me calling you a B will not get you to custom, to do something physical to me. And I called him 10 more bees. I know y'all. And he came running upstairs and put his hand around my neck and was like, if you ever, ever call me that again, to the moon, Ethel. That's not funny at all. It's sad, actually. But, but he did give me the, if you ever do that to me again, uh, and I was like, wow, okay. And interestingly enough, I, in long debate, we ended up breaking up or I was like, let's break up. That's going to have to be my last straw. And um, one of the guys that, that I went on a date with shortly after him, I told the guy that that story and I was like, can you believe he put his hands on me? And he, the guy that I was on the date with, I dated him a little bit. Like we dated a few times. We went on a few dates after him. And he, he was like, Aaron, you were wrong. You shouldn't have called him that many more bees. And I was like, but... My in my thinking, I was like, if you're not the type to escalate a verbal confrontation to a physical confrontation, it doesn't matter what I say, because you'll know that I'm not that it's not a physical confrontation. And he was like, Aaron, you were wrong. And I was like, oh, well, maybe. And I, I've been I, I thought about it a lot. And I was like, yeah, well, maybe I was also wrong for not warning him that that's an ELE for me, extinction level event for me and our my relationship with anybody. You put your hands on me. That's the end of it immediately. And I was like, yeah, well, maybe I was wrong for not giving him a warning. But then I thought more about it and I realized that the person that I was dating didn't know the whole story or didn't know everything because, and I actually recently, somewhat recently, well, actually very recently, because in preparation for this topic, I picked these cards at random y'all, but in preparation for the topic, I remembered how he, um, one time I locked him out of the house or something because s something got, we, we had some sort of tift and I locked him out and eventually, um, I was like, you know what? I can't keep him outside of the house. I need to let him in. And when I let him in the house, he backed me up against the wall and he was like, if you ever, ever 
do this to me again. I'll... And that was the first time. And then I realized, oh, so that's why I was curious to test him with the calling him a B that many more times in the another event of ours because I was like, oh, you've gotten in my face like that before. And I also think about the fact that abuse doesn't start with the worst event. And I remember this person on stage talking about this woman whose husband threw an iron chair at her in one of their quarrels. And the person on stage was like, yeah, their struggles didn't start with him throwing an iron chair at her. Their relationship had many more struggles on that path. And, yep. Yeah, the physical abuse evolves. So, yeah, it was tough of me calling him the B word 10 more times. Maybe I should not have done that. Tough's not the right word, but maybe I should not have done that. I, I, I get that. But considering what he had done to me a few days prior, or even weeks prior with backing me up against the wall. Like, if you ever do that, to the moon, you know? It's like, okay, so is he actually the kind of person who I would get into this deep, loving relationship with and we end up... And he ends up being that guy who's throwing an iron chair at me. I don't know. I will say, and, and this is part of the, re and that's the reason that my 40-year-old baggage-holding self tells my love, my heart, who I plan to marry, yes, that a lot, and how I'm like, you got one time to put your hands on me, and it's over. I don't care. I don't care about the fact that, and I understand this is tough for people, but having kids and anything, nah, you put your hands on me once because it's not just going to stop there. Just like when he backed me up against the wall when he was mad at me, and then later on, he put his hands over it gently gently around my neck. That's how things evolve. They grow. And it was growing right in front of me. And I didn't realize it. But fortunately, we separated. Anyway. I also think about the song My Love by Wayna, who is an amazing artist. I love her song My Love. And she talks about in the bridge, she's it's an abusive relationship situation. And she sings about how this wasn't supposed to be my life. I thought I had done everything right. And I, I guess my emotions are welling up again, thinking about if we had stayed on that path, if he and I had stayed connected down that path. I could be that person who sings. This wasn't supposed to be my life. I thought I had done everything right. Pretending not to see the signs. Pretending not to see the... Okay, forget it. That, that, that's going to be um, our underrated hype TV one day. Anyway, speaking of which... Here comes Underrated Hive TV. Like, share, subscribe, share again, and do not forget to click like, please, and thank you very much.
Hashtag underrated hype TV A6 trailer runs find a way at underrated hype TV hashtag verse TV A6C. All right. So I have loved that. That's from his debut album self-titled and I have loved that album for over a decade now because I didn't find it when it was new but I did love the song after I got the album and actually listened to the full album because I got the album in college and I fell in love with like his first couple of songs or whatever. And then I didn't listen as much as I should have. And later on, I fell in love with this particular song, Find A Way, because it is exceptional. And I think about this time I was on a church retreat. We were on a retreat and uh, one of those fun church retreats. And part of what was at the venue was a, a zip line. And I remember I, and this was post MS diagnosis. But I was still walking around, no, not even using a cane at that point. But I just had minor struggles, minor difficulties, complications. And at that time. But I'm gonna get better. I believe it. Yes. I remember at the church retreat. They had the zip line and it was at the top of this very big pole. And then you got to zip line across and down and all of that. And I was like, that looks like so much fun, but I don't know if I'm physically able to climb all the way up that pole. And I remember at that time, I had sort of recently come across this song, Find a Way. And I just remember in my mind, I was like, you know what? Yes, I can. I've got to find a way. I've got to find a way. I can do it. I can do it. And I climbed up that pole. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And I was able to get connected to the zip line and zip all the way down. And I, I was very proud of that moment that I, I was very pleased with that. And yeah, I, her, I don't know how it would be for me getting up a pole like that to slide down a, a zip line currently, but I'm not giving up. I can't give up. You can't give up. Let's not give up okay and oh that's right okay sorry really quickly this woman that i recently met at my acupuncturist office she also had ms diagnosis she's had it for 20 years and she was just in there just using a cane and i told her i, I let her know I was like, thank you. Thank you for still going. We can't give up. You inspire me. And I said that to her right in the office. I was like, thank you. You are inspiring me because you are not giving up. You are still getting it. She's like, she was diagnosed 20 years ago. And She, she does have a husband, right? And I mentioned that because I, I remember 
years ago, a natural healer of mine, the natural healer that I went to see in 2013, spoke of the importance of having happiness and love in your life for seeing improvement in your life with MS and seeing improvement physically. And like I said, she mentioned she has a supportive husband who gives her good, healthy food to eat and everything. And I'm like, that. that's great. And I will say, yes, love is important. It's important to have, don't rush to be with the wrong love just because you think like in order to heal I, I need to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend and end up being more stressed out because you're with somebody who I have enough minutes to go into this so I will just to be with somebody who brings you more stress because the relationship is not a mess. You're a bad pair. And I'll say, I'm not going to say you need to love yourself before you can love somebody else. Because I remember a uh, psychologist speaking to that and she's like, yeah, no, th that's not true because Babies don't know how to love themselves, but they're able to love and receive love from their parents. So that that's just not true. But I do say love and enjoy yourself. I'm not going to say you have to do it first, but love and, and enjoy yourself. Possibly at the same time and grow together. But... Love and enjoy yourself and time with yourself. Yeah, and I remember one of my uh, former boyfriends, I'm talking about everybody today, he, and this is part of the reason we broke up the first time, he was like, but Aaron, you have to understand, he was a few years older than me. He's a 76 baby. It's all good. He, um, he's like, but Aaron, you have to understand, relationships and love mean stress. So the farther down the road we go of our relationship means the more stress that you're going to have. And I was like, stress is not good for MS. I need to not be with you because I don't want stress. I can't have stress. I don't think stress was the right word for him to use. I do understand how it takes work. It takes work and it's not always going to be a banana boat cruise line. You know, sometimes things can be difficult. But I, I don't think he should have said it means we're going to have increased stress exponentially as we go down the relationship trail. It's like, I, I don't think that's how it has to be. Anyway, all right, Hashtag Verse TV family, peace, Hashtag Verse TV dot com. Pow, right on it. <laughs> Stay blessed. Have a good night, morning, afternoon, Everything. Todo. I, I think that's how you say all in Spanish. In Espanol. Todo. Todo bien. Yes. All good. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right.